Hello and welcome to this Markets Today special. I'm Udayan Mukherjee and with me to my guest on the show today, Hiren Ved of Alchemy. Hiren, thanks for joining in. It's been a very couple of very good weeks for the market. We've pulled back very smartly from the recent lows. Is it a counter trend, a relief kind of a rally or do you think it's backed by solid uh, earnings fundamentals? So thanks Udayan, thanks for having me on the show. Um, yes, I think after a very tough Feb and March, I think April has turned out to be reasonably good. I think it's a combination of both, but I would think the big relief is largely come from the fact that so far, whatever earnings that we have seen, probably barring a few companies like Infosys, have been either in line or slightly better than expectations, right? And just to set the context right, I mean, you know, every once in a while we are hit by some narrative which is which creates a risk of environment in the market, right? So early in the year we had the Adani uh, Hindenburg issue, which which rattled the markets a little bit. Uh, thereafter, we had the U.S. banking failures, which rattled the markets, but Typically, the markets tend to recover from these events after trying to price in what it could mean for earnings. And I think that uh, if you look at the first three quarters of 22-23, just in the aftermath of the Russia-Ukraine war, right? If you look at the picture, you will see that X financials, if you take the top 500 companies, uh, and if you look at the balance 420 odd companies, which are non-financial, you had almost a 550 basis point knock on EBITDA margins because of rising raw material costs, supply chain issues, uh, you know, energy costs, and so on and so forth. And in the fourth quarter, that is the Jan to March quarter for which the earnings is underway, we've almost, at least for the results that are already out, and if you take the financials out of that, we've almost clawed back 190 basis point of EBITDA margins back. And that's a combination of the fact that companies would have taken price hikes, commodity prices have rolled over, and therefore I think Broadly, I would say that India Inc. has managed the PNL far better after the knocks that they took in the first three quarters of last year. And I think that confidence is what is getting reflected in the markets. Obviously, there will be a few technical factors. But if you ask me where the confidence comes from, I think it largely comes from the fact that margins are coming back and earnings are coming back. Mm. So if you take out uh, segments like IT, which are going through a rough patch at this point in time, you think earnings will hold up for the rest of the pack for the rest of the year? Because one common fear which is articulated is that as the year progresses, maybe you will see some uh, earnings drawdowns. The expectations which are set now, they will have to be marked down for the rest of FY24. You don't necessarily uh, belong to that, uh, uh, to that line of thinking. You know, then it's difficult because, uh, you know, things are changing so fast in the macro environment. Uh, so it's difficult to say what the earnings will be four quarters down the line. But I think directionally, after two strong years of earnings post COVID, last year was a little bit of a dampener. And, you know, the thing is that with earnings is that in, in 22, uh, commodity producers actually made more money and commodity users lost profitability, right? And the commodity producers have a smaller weight in the index and the commodity users have a larger weight in the index. And I'm talking ex-financials right now, right? I think this year you will slowly see, hopefully barring any other disruptions which is difficult to predict during the year. If I think that trend of lower commodity prices continues, 
then I think the earnings trajectory, which was double digit mid teens kind of earnings growth will come back in 23, 24. So if that comes back, I think the markets will come back. And, and, and I'm, you know, barring IT, I don't see any significant cut to earnings uh, in terms of where we are. Hmm. What are you doing with IT now? I mean, uh, because, you know, there are two points of view. The gaining point of view is IT is to be stayed out of for the moment. But there are contrarians who say that price points are now weakening to levels where for long term franchises like Infosys, TCS, Tech Mahindra, maybe you should be nibbling at the sector. Uh, you've been underweight um, from what I can gather in the sector. But after the recent price correction, how are you approaching it? So then I think uh, we were underweight in the traditional sense of the word that we didn't have exposure to the uh, the top three or the top four in IT services. Our view over the last few years has been that you have to be with some of the select mid caps in the ERD space. So our exposure was largely to companies like Tata LXC, KPIT, persistent and LTTS, right? And those companies have done as a pack far better than what the larger tech companies have done. And these companies have, even in a tough environment, have been able to deliver north of 20, 25% earnings growth, as opposed to the biggies, which are now fallen down to single digit earnings growth, right? So the market is differentiating within the tech pack. But if you ask me, um, I think yes, uh, though we don't intend to take exposure in the larger companies because we think that they will still grow on a structural basis much lower than some of the mid caps will. I think that the valuations now more or less capture all the risks that have played out, right? And I also am of the camp that I think with the whole new wave of generative AI, et cetera, and we have to wait and see how that impacts. If you look at the history of the IT companies, every new technology spending wave, right? Whether it was digital, whether it was cloud, before that, if it was uh, ERP before that database. I think every single large trend where there has been more spending on technology has in the end benefited IT service companies because not all companies barring the really great tech companies in the US, the Fortune 500 companies can't figure out how they can use some of these technologies to improve their business and they need Indian companies to help them with that. So I'm very confident that you may have even in the larger companies or the, you know, the, the, the general software services businesses, a slow growth over the next two or three quarters. But I do see tech spending coming back. The day you hear the word technical word recession in the US, I think that by that time, I think these stocks would have probably bottomed out if they haven't. Mm. You used an interesting phrase, Hiren, uh, by saying that valuations now capture most of the bad news. Would you say that of the new age digital companies? Because, you know, they fell a lot, some of them bounced, but you know, the ones which were thought of as the best of the breed, like Daika, I mean, they're languishing at 52-week lows. Uh, have yes. you started nibbling at any of them or would you still stay away? So interesting question, um, Odian. I think uh, rather than talking as a pack, I would say that in some of those, uh, we have started to invest. And that's because I think, you know, the valuations now reflect the reality and more. I think these companies are now far more focused on profitability. And uh, I don't think that competitors are going to be funded anymore in their spaces, 
right? Because all that money has now completely got dried up and that cycle will still remain very tough where companies would find it extremely tough to raise capital. You know, investors were just throwing money and the entrepreneurs were doing five things simultaneously because they had enough capital. Uh, and today they are all into cutting costs, conserving and strategically focusing on stuff that would make money for them. I think if you have a three to five year view, in some of these companies, it makes sense to start nibbling and start taking positions. There is one challenge, however, uh, which still persists, which is that the problem why some of these companies beyond the fact that they were not profitable was the incessant supply overhang from the founders or the private equity funds or the original investors who are hurt substantially and had to exit many of these companies because that's these were the only listed stuff that they could sell. So I think the overhang of large supply, their market caps are still significantly large. So one has to be mindful of that. But I think selectively, it makes sense to start looking and start investing in these companies if you have a longer term view. Hmm. Staying with this line of uh, taking contrarian calls, uh, Hiran, I would like to ask you about pharmaceuticals because it seems like a almost like the darkest hour for that sector. Completely out of favor, stocks languishing, nobody interested, uh, weightage in indices at nearly all time lows, beset with bad news flow like US FDA. Is this, the, is this the darkest hour for pharma where contrarian investors should be looking at it? Or do you think the news is too bad to walk in at this point? So, then, you know, um, I think pharma was anyway a very complex sector. But I think the go-go years of pharma where everybody made money in the generic space was done and over with by 2012, 2014. Right. And ever since then, we've had a significant slide. And I think the way to play pharma is to sub segment the pharma and look at, uh, uh, you know, look at each of these segments and then take bets on that. But if you ask me, generally speaking, is this the darkest hour and is the are there opportunities in pharma? I would certainly say yes. Um, I think there are some interesting plays in companies that are manufacturing API or CDMO. Uh, I think those are interesting. I think India formulation still uh, is a decent area to be in. I'm not sure if US generics is going to be as profitable as it was uh, for most of the pharma companies. But what we are hearing is that probably the level of price erosion that we saw in the past is now abating. Prices are more stable and at least the commodity end of the generics market may have seen some kind of a bottom. So I think you pick and choose, you know, where you are in that space. We've largely stuck to companies which are in more of a CDMO or API manufacturing space rather than going into formulations and US generics. I think that's still a minefield. Uh, you know, despite a couple of years, we keep hearing US FDA problems recurring and it just makes it very difficult to take a long term view on some of these companies. Okay. Let me ask you about a long standing blue chip, uh, which has not really delivered great returns uh, over the last decade or so. I mean, the last few quarters have not been bad, but you know, LNT is part of pretty much every long term portfolio. I mean, the blue chip that you'll always find there. Uh, now, do you think after such a long lull where returns have been subpar, the next decade could see the return of LNT firing once again as CapEx comes back slowly into vogue? Absolutely, uh, Udyan. I think that if you ask me, I think you, you're likely to see a regime change in the market. And I feel some of the sectors which drove returns during the bull market of 2003 to 2007 
you're going to see some of those same sectors come back, right? Capital goods, infrastructure, cement, real estate, uh, you know, electrical goods, power, though this time it will be not thermal, but more renewable, and it's difficult to find too many, uh, you know, renewable place today. But the broad point that I'm trying to make is that, you know, every eight to 10 years, you have a kind of a regime change in the market. You have a change in leadership. And my sense is that we are in a era where I think some of these old forgotten sectors are likely to come back and deliver reasonably strong returns, right? Um, and therefore, I think LNT leads the pack. Uh, you know, they all had did phenomenally well during the go go years, but the problem was that from EPC companies, they became asset owners, they racked up too much debt, their capital allocation was not the greatest. And over the last couple of years, all of them have realized they have improved their capital allocation. For example, LNT put a large part of their capital in the software sector and has really created value for minority shareholders. They have shed a lot of their asset heavy businesses, non-strategic core businesses, they've reduced leverage, right? And I think they're now ready to take on the large capex boom and the infrastructure boom that are that we are likely to see. And also understand that so many of these uh, engineering companies have gone bust. So supply has just gone out of the system. There are fewer surviving companies, right? I mean, the IVR CLs of the world and the simplexes of the world and the Jyoti structures of the world across the sector, they are no longer there. They are dead and gone. Uh, and therefore, the ones that survive are likely to reap the benefits because clearly CAPEX spending, at least for now by the government, is at a much larger order than it was, let's say, between 2012 and 2018 or 2019, right? So especially post-COVID, we've seen that the government mm -hmm. is doing the heavy lifting of spending and every budget has seen higher allocations to capital expenditure. And slowly and steadily, private capex is also picking up. So I think we are likely to see a regime change in the market. And some of the old leaders, which went nowhere for the last eight, 10 years, some of them who have reformed their balance sheets, deleveraged, refocused, are going to come back and make more money for us. You're in. Great to hear your thoughts as always. Thank you very much uh, for finding time today. Thanks. Thanks, Udayan. Thanks for having me on the show. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.